yeah i just i've been seeing so many uh tiktoks and stuff about the review bombing of the hell divers and uh, i just it's crazy and i see a lot of comments about uh like the psn fanboys like it's you just you just gotta sign up like oh look at these pc whiny brats blah 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 yeah well sony no fan that. sony fanboys the most feverish and loudest allowed of bootlickers online hello and welcome to level 103 of the thoughts and players podcast the gaming podcast with bold takes and no strings attached i am jeremy here with my compadre david what up what up how are you doing this evening i'm doing fine how about you not bad not bad got done doing the yard um you know so expended some energy feeling good feeling hungry me too much down on soaked yeah it's mush. Like if I try to put the lawnmower on it, I just mm-hmm. sink and get stuck. Yeah, see, and that's what ends up happening is my yard's kind of the same. It'll like flood, but then the grass gets so much water and it gets and it's most of the sun is back there, so it gets super thick. So it's yeah. it's it's crazy. But um thick and tall. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 crazy trying to but I was able to do it, got through it. Good. You know, it's good. good. You know, it gives off some energy, you get stuff mm-hmm. done and it grows so it grows back so fast. I'm probably have to cut it again in like three days, which sucks. But yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we welcome into this level of the pod, level 103. So we got a couple of topics lined up. I'm excited about one that uh, I think is very big and interesting, and the other one that's a little fun and light, and I'm excited about it. Um, I'm excited Balanced about everything. So it sounds like yeah. <clears throat> but before we get to those topics. Let's talk about what we've been playing. So, I can go first on this. I'll lead the way on it. Yeah, go right ahead. What I've been playing. Well, guess what your boy's been playing? It's a Manor Lords. Oh, you want to know how I was able to get it working? You bought By it starting on PC? A com- starting a completely new game. Yeah. So, uh, the game that I had, six, the town that I invested six hours in, six or seven hours in, the town and then the little town that I was just starting. I'm a little mad about it. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I built my town up to about 40 people. Right. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a decent number in that game. Cause you're just building small European towns. So then I won a claim of another region and I was setting up a town in that region. That town was going to be my clay town. It has a, it has a clay, a rich deposit of clay there. I was going to get the clay, take it to my oven, turn it into roof tiles, export them and print money so I could finance an army, right? To take okay. over everything. Um, and then the save didn't work anymore. So now I'm back to square one with a small town. I think I've got maybe seven families there. So that's about, you know, between like 14 to 21 people, right? Um, and so I'm working that, doing that. Um, but as I said before, in the interim of the game not working, I started playing other games. Mm-hmm. So now I'm not singularly focused on Manor Lords. Right. Because I got into Roller Coaster Tycoon a little bit. But I didn't play that this past week or two. Oh. The game that I got back into is the game that I've put the most time into of all time. And that's Software Inc. So I'm back, oh, back into on it. That, huh? I'm back onto it. I'm all doing right. a little bit of a different playthrough with this one. Instead of me starting my company and making a product and then scaling it to market it and then, you know, print and ship copies of it, I've just been making the product and selling it and splitting royalties with publishers. So they handle all the marketing. They handle selling and printing all the copies. I just make the software and then just patch updates. So that's been cool because I've been able to make my company five, 10, 15 million dollars with one employee. I recently just hired two. So now I've got three people in total, and we're going to be cranking out the hits. We're going to be cranking them out, but i got to work up to it. But, again, it's just three people. And at this point in a playthrough, with this amount of money, I would usually have hired, I don't know, 15, 20 people, have a bunch of logistics and different things i got to figure it out with this one. I'm like, you know what? I'm Keep cool making simple. less money, keeping it simple, until I have enough money in to where I can buy a place and just – hop on and just destroy everyone you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so i've i've been 
yeah, and it's it's been interesting to play it out a little bit different than I would in the past. And so that's been the interesting story with that game. But it's been mostly split between Manor Lords, um, which hopefully it works again. I haven't played it in a little bit, so hopefully my load actually works. If it doesn't, I'm going to be done for a while because I, yeah, Software Inc. Too. Yeah, Software Inc. has enough of my interest to where it's like, you know what, I'll just do this. Um, but yeah, it's been between Manor Lords and Software Inc. Enjoying both of them. Again, they're for yeah. some reason relaxing games, even though with one I'm having to deal with the logistics of starting up a town and having to feed people and provide shelter and firewoods. So they don't die in the winter. And then the other one, I'm having to, you know, make sure I have people there to create tax reports and buy <laughs> metals so I can avoid <laughs> and, you know, reduce my taxable liability and stuff. So it's all, it's all great. That's two, it for uh, me. Two very different side of spectrum games you got going. Yeah. Uh, for me, I've been playing a lot more Dead by Daylight. I uh, succumbed to the time I missed, which, by the way, I looked at my achievements in Dead by Daylight, and the last one I got before I started playing again was in November of 2021. Ah. So a lot longer than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. But I bought some of the DLCs. Uh, There was another Resident Evil one that came out so i got that one and i got two other ones that where it's just uh killers that dvd invented so it's like their own thing Mm -hmm. and uh i've been trying to get achievements this is the only game i've ever been an achievement hunter for and i don't know why but in this game you have each person a survivor and the killers they all come with three perks and an achievement for every single killer and every single survivor is to either escape with only the three perks they come with or get a merciless or ruthless, I forget the term, but you have to pretty much have a really great game and kill all four survivors with the killer with only their three perks. Mm. And it's it's pretty pretty stressful. I I did it with two of them. I'm still working on another one. He's kind of hard. He is a high skill skill ceiling and mm-hmm. the, even the floor is kind of high like i the first game i played at them i didn't even use a uh an ability there it is that's the word that i didn't even know he had mm-hmm. i read the description and i didn't even know he had it so <laughs> it, it's been a lot of fun and yeah. uh apex new season started yesterday as of the recording they have a new character I wasn't really looking at uh, stuff for it coming out and everything, so I think their name is Alter, and they okay. can, like, their ability is they can uh, put things on walls, and you can pretty much go through it. It's like a little semi-portal, and so you can put it through rocks and buildings, and you it's like you're creating your own doorway. So that even, that changes the playing field so much. You think you're bunkered in, you're nice and safe in this little building? No, because now you have to worry about a hole developing and either getting teleported out of it or a whole team coming in at you. So it's, it's really, uh, it's a lot of fun. That's what I've been playing. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Am I to make the assumption by the time we record our next level, you'll be back into overwatch. I got two more days. I got two more days. Uh, Maybe we'll see. I, it's, it, it's been a double-edged sword, this yeah. band. Like I'm like, you know what? I really want to play, but you know what? I'm not having. I don't have to deal with people. Yeah. So it's it's not too bad. That's true of going outside. Uh, yeah. I want to play, go outside, but I don't feel like dealing with people, so I stay inside. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um. And so, like, you, so you're just going back, like, you mentioned the last achievement you got was in 2021, November, you said the 21. Mm-hmm. And so you're still hunting for that next one. How many achieve, like, how many achievements do you think you've unlocked so far in that game? So I can, I can click that right now. Let's see. I have 187 out of 249. Okay. 
one thing that I that I found interesting is um so for some so for in some instances like when I'm playing software ink mm-hmm. I might I you know I create these games when I'm cre- when I'm playing these games I'm creating my own story in my head so sometimes I'll use like trainers or cheats with them so what's really interesting with software ink is that I have 250 now probably 253 hours in it and it has 13 achievements and I've unlocked none of them wow so it's it's like uh you know are they Maybe like I need just to... kind of crazy out there achievements? I don't, I don't you know? think so. Like some of them. So there's one achievement, one personal achievement that I've been wanting that I never get to because I never stick with the game long enough during the playthrough. And Got that it. is uh, becoming a billion dollar company. It's very easy to become a, mil- a million dollar, multi million dollar company. Mm-hmm. It's not as easy to be a billion dollar company. So let's see if I look at my, uh, uh let's see here go to go to software inc and let's see let's look at the um achievement list here yeah i got none of them pretty crazy yeah it's 15 achievements and okay. let's see one of them is won a platinum award by winning five years in a row so they've they've added some things like they add at, at, they used to didn't have um, awards for like products, but now you can win awards. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's see here. Have ten employees sue you in a class action? I haven't oh. had that yet. Oh, you're you're just a, a good boss. Yeah. Uh, play for eighty years. Haven't done that yet. Take over five companies in one year. Haven't done that yet. Um, have over five hundred employees. Haven't reached that yet. Release 10 sequels for the same IP. That's probably the e- one of the easier ones in this list. And then they have one called okay. This Is Fine, which is have somebody perish in a fire. <laughs> so, a little meme uh, achievement there for you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I haven't touched any of those really, but I don't know. Maybe one day I will. Perish in a fire seems really easy to set up. You just kind of... I mean, yeah. you, send, you just Sims 1 it, right? You just... Put someone in a box and it on fire and just let them go. Exactly. And go, going back to the the one you said, it's easy to make a million dollar company, mm-hmm. but it's hard to make a billion one. And that reminded me, like a million seconds is 0.03 of a year, mm-hmm. but a billion seconds is 31 years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it sounds really close, but it's so far apart. Yeah, it takes a lot of like longevity and a lot of like product and like making your systems really efficient in that game. I think I've gotten to maybe like 300 something million as far as like the value of my company. Um, But you also have to be strategic. Like you can buy companies and like take them over and those companies can produce products that therefore make a lot of money. And that makes you a lot of money. Like there's different ways to get there, but I just haven't done a playthrough long enough to where I hit the billion. One day I might though. Maybe after another 250 hours. I don't know. (laughs) Right. Uh, yeah, that's it for all we've been playing, though. So I guess let's hop into the topics, huh? Yeah. Uh, one second. I have a little visitor. Yeah. He's hungry, so he asked for oh. some chips. Oh. Yes. Okay. So topics. So mine is. I want to keep it as as based as possible, mm-hmm. you know. So there's an article I I just sent to you, and it made me think of something. So Microsoft just bought Bethesda and some other stuff, and they closed four companies that they bought mm-hmm. recently. They closed four Bethesda studios. That's yeah. what that article is. Okay, so. My thing is, what America is all about is, you know, starting your own business, being free, and all that, and, you know, it breeds innovation, but the problem is, all these really, really big companies are like, hey, love your stuff, I'd love to buy it for you, and then they just like, okay, cool, 
Yeah, I'm gonna dismantle that for you. Yeah. And then also they don't have competitors. Mm-hmm. So like, my topic. Should there be like some sort of a cap on how many companies you can buy a year, or you know how? I know this one would be hard, but like how many competitors of a minimum or something because mm-hmm. kind of crazy you know xbox is buying all these things sony's buying all these things and there, there's just always the constant main three consoles of a competition there's all these companies they're buying and you know they make their games and stuff and then if they don't put out what they like they just close them up yeah yeah, well, you had, like, you remember, like, there was the whole, I don't know if there was a suit that happened, but there was the whole thing in regards to Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard. Like, they had to go through right. so many different legal things because they're trying to make sure that this sale or merger doesn't create, uh, like, a monopoly, essentially, right? Like, them be able mm-hmm. to really kind of have a unequal control of the market. So I think... Yes, have been able to like manage those things and make sure that things are competitive. They're staying competitive. Uh, is is that that that's ideally what we're doing? But I mean, we know that a lot of times it's not happening, right? Like that's unfortunately yeah. just just a lot of the issues. And like you kind of mentioned, you know, Xbox acquires Bethesda, and Bethesda is comprised of Bethesda Game Studios as well as all these other studios. It's software. Arcane, and I know that one of the studios they shut down was Arcane Austin, uh, which created Redfall. So, yeah. uh, some of them uh, made sense. Yeah, but there was a, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the other studio, but it was a studio that did high, that that created High Five Rush, yeah, a game yeah. that performed well, that reviewed well, that they ported to the PlayStation and also sold well. So it's kind of like, what did that studio do to right get a complete axe? Like that doesn't that doesn't add up really. Um, it's a complete opposite of Redfall. Yeah, and it still got the same axe. Yeah, hundred percent. That's like, it's interesting because you have that and you have like Arcane Austin. I remember seeing um, a article headline that said, you know, basically inside Xbox, success is treated like failure. You had a studio that failed with a game, and you had a studio that succeeded with the game, and they both got axed at the same time. So right. it's um and arguably the studio that failed had more resources available to them. So it's like, I don't know. Um yeah, it's 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 weird. Obviously, ideally, that's not the case. Like like the people that are in positions to make sure that those that things are being exploited and that they do their due diligence are actually doing it, but I mean, I don't know because it's happening a lot. I'll, even outside of gaming, you think of I think of like Microsoft acquiring um, OpenAI, Chat GPT. Like, mm-hmm. we can't make a product that competes with them. Let's just buy them out because we have the means to do so, and then we can either exploit it the way we want to, or we can, you know, eliminate it. Right? I think I'm trying to think of a game company. There's like obviously different examples of like a game company that will like acquire a game or acquire a studio and then close that studio down because you're making the same game as us. You're going to compete in our space. It's cheaper for us to just acquire you and shut you down than to compete, you know, um, right. Then to, to compete fairly in the marketplace because, you know, you messed around and made a better product than us. So it happens a lot, unfortunately. And it seems like, um, yeah, as, things kind of rise and fall weirdly that that might end up happening more you know yeah i mean hopefully because oh that's how i feel you know like growing up i've always wanted to own my own business and somebody you know selling the same kind of product as me that would just make me want to work harder and you know try to right. do better or you know like you maybe said, work innovate. some better deals or you know like something i not like hey i'm gonna go get a loan i'm gonna buy you and then look everyone has to come to me now and Mm -hmm. i don't have to work as hard right yeah it's the same it kind of goes back to the the topic you had before about like 
what like game genres that need like more competition, right? Because the idea is that point, competition exactly. competition is pushing for innovation. You're pushing to create different, you know, better pro- products or, you know, just become a company that is more consumer oriented and consumer friendly, right? Like mm-hmm. trying to do those things. Um, Xbox is in a precarious situation um, because they've been in a position where they've needed to innovate and haven't really yeah so you know like you know it's just an example of that is if you think about the play the xbox one ps4 era generation Mm -hmm. xbox clearly lost that and the next gen they're saying hey series x it's powerful here you go whatever whatever this and playstation said oh hey like we won but here's the next playstation and oh hey Here's the thing. We've innovated on our controller. So they brought a whole new experience on that. Even after after having won the last gen. And Xbox comes with the same. Xbox could have found a bunch of different ways to make experiences more interactive. Right. Mm -hmm. But Sony was the one that thought about it. So sometimes it's just innate. It's just instilled. And I mean, was that innovation brought about by competition? Maybe a little, but it's also dro- driven internally, right? So, right. Um, I would say that pro- they were probably mo- they probably got more push of innovating from Nintendo than they did Xbox. So, I think Nintendo is a great example of that. Yeah, of, they're of, always changing. They're it, always it, it, trying knows to innovate. what you're going to have for the next system. And that's because the guessing game. And that's because they um they don't they don't produce powerful systems. They refuse to now. So in order yeah. to com- in order to compete, they have to find different innovative ways of getting people to gravitate and innovate with their and, and engage with their their consoles and their platforms. That's an example yeah. of, of being pushed to innovate, I guess, you know. But again, a lot of that stuff is internally driven too, not just competition. Yeah. And like uh talking about this reminds me of uh I forget the guy's name, but in Xbox is like, well, you know, Sony won last console, so like we're not really gonna try and push that. We're just going to try to do, you know, something else that hopefully might work. The interview heard around the gaming world, Phil Spencer, where he yeah. basically said that, hey, you know, we lost the last one. We're in third place now. I mean, you know, we got to kind of. And everyone with an Xbox was like, what are you saying? How, right how is that your take? Yeah. Everyone's like, well, what he's trying to say is, is that they have to come up with different ways because the standard ways they're not really getting. It's like, yeah, right. 100%. That's what he was trying to say and he said it the worst way possible. And everyone has a right to react to that. Because yeah. what he made it sound like is that like, hey, you schmucks that bought an Xbox, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is the expect best you can the expect. expected because that's what we got. Yeah. It's just, you know, so I don't know, man. But maybe I mean maybe these and it's unfortunate like these studios are getting shut down, more people are losing jobs, right? It's just they just it's just stacks, man. I swear to God, I like. I mean, I don't think I'm Nostradamus, but every single week since the Dark Age is coming, loss, studio close, studio close, studio yeah, close. The layoffs are insane lately. Yeah, and so I mean, even leading into that, there were a bunch of layoffs, and so um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but. Um, I mean, just in general, especially in gaming, we keep it in gaming. Capitalism has run amok a bit um, and they're trying to right the ship. And I mm. think you have too many people from other industries, whether it be tech, whether it be uh, entertainment that are already in these con- super corroded, twisted industries that are coming in and trying to be a part of it. So you already got people that coming from shaky foundation is trying to right the ship. I don't know if it'll work or not. Yeah, I just I was have to say, hey, you uh, indie artists, I respect it. It's strong. The indies, the, the indies don't sell will, it. The indies will literally save gaming. They will save it, um, because unlike before, they're immensely more accessible. Yeah, right. Um, I talked to like mentioned Manor Lords, right? Manor Lords mm-hmm. sold a million copies in a day. It was mostly produced by one person. And then it got a publisher, and now it's being worked on by seven people. 
and it sold a million copies in a day. Indies will save gaming. It's not going to be these big triple A's. Um, they're going to keep doing stuff. They keep coming up with crazy ways to monetize. We kind of talked about that last week mm-hmm. that are like putting putting people off more and more. They're spending all this money and all this time on games and they may hit or may not. Um, but it's not. It's I, I read another article that said, um, well, at least the headline it had mentioned that of last year. Of the seven most, or no, of the ten most played games of last year, nine of them were seven years or older. Really, the only new game that broke the top ten for most game for most most players, I weirdly out of left field was Starfield. Oh, yeah, which I wouldn't expect based on what everyone else was saying. I thought everyone was playing Baldur's Gate. It right. appears they weren't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, that's that's all I got. Yeah. Well, I, it's an interesting topic. It kind of it, it leads into like this whole thing of just like this is real energy, like foreboding energy over the gaming industry right now, and I don't know really where to go with it. And there's another uh, yeah, example much. that I'll bring up for my final thought about. Okay about gaming's practices but i want to jump into something we're talking about uh them getting it wrong so david i want to put you in a predicament of having to be the person that gets it right oh so this is a little game thingy i don't know what i'm going to call it i don't know what it is maybe less of a game and just kind of like a nice little experiment a thought experiment okay all right so here's here's the premise David, you've been hired on as the creative director and strategist of X, whatever, gaming studio. This gaming studio has just received an IP that has either been canceled or is in trouble. And you have been tasked with resurrecting it for the current gaming community, industry people. Right? Right. There's three attributes that I want you to consider as you concoct the idea of how you're going to pitch these games. Okay. Okay. So I can give you the first one. The first I'm one. bringing up notepad. Okay. What is it? First one is genre. Genre. Okay. Okay. The second one, you have to consider if this game is going to be a single player only game, a multiplayer only game, or will it have both? Okay. And the third is going to be the general, not in detail, but the general story. What's the angle that you're going to be taking with the story? Okay. Okay. Now I've got three games that I'm going to do that I want you to do this for. Ooh. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so the the first one, I want to give you the I'm going to give you the out of left field one first, and then I'll give you the other two. Okay. David, you have been tasked with resurrecting Left for Dead. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. So, we already have great experience from Back for Blood of what did well, what didn't do well, which seems to be most of it, right? Okay. (laughs) So, for... The genre being, uh, I forget the term of it, but it's just an onslaught of, of you know, bad guys that are semi-easy, right? Yeah. And there's not too many of these. So this coming out, it's probably going to do decent given the game doesn't just automatically look like crap yeah. like Redfall did, right? Mm-hmm. So... This is obviously going to have to be both. It's going to have a single. It's going to have multi. You know what? We'll even we'll even do split screen to bring that back, all right? Okay. Okay. Because why not? Some people okay. still look for that. You know, it might yeah. be a little niche thing nowadays because not anybody does it, really. Right. You know? And the story, the story, okay? I feel like we need to continue some characters from the previous Left 4 Deads and do new characters, right? So 
we'll have the original characters be an unlockable thing. We'll have the first story mode is just going to be the new characters. That's going to be set in the same time frame as the originals, right? Okay. And these four people are going to be somewhere else on Earth because they wouldn't be in the same place because we already went through that, right? Mm-hmm. So we'll do that. And then, you know, you just beat any campaign on any mode, make it accessible to people who don't have a lot of time to play or don't have great skills at games, you know? Mm-hmm. We ain't making Dark Souls over here. Right. Right. So then you unlock the other characters from the other games and we'll have a story mode for them of, you know, the second part of from the previous games. And then there'll be a second story mode for the, the new characters that we developed. And, you know, in the original Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, they have, I can't remember if it's four or five different scenarios, right? Mm-hmm. And so we'll, we'll we'll still have that. We'll have the four or five different scenarios for the original story for the new characters, and then we'll have four or five scenarios for the second story for all three sets of characters. And in the those, it'll be more of a mix. You can choose, you know, four characters from any of the twelve. Okay. Because they 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 meet up, you know, make right. it more, bring it together. Because you know, Bill with with Coach, I think would be kind of funny. You know, uh, I forget the other. One of the guys' names in the first one, but uh, we got pills here, pills here, and it was really funny. I played that guy a lot uh, with uh, oh, I know I don't know names, but I I just think the characters mix matching and uh, arguing with each other or you know uh, BSing with each other, I think it would be really great for there in the story and bringing back all I don't know about all of them, but at least the original uh, zombie that. I forget what they're special infected. There we go. Okay. Bring yeah. back the original, maybe a couple from the uh, Left 4 Dead 2, and then we'll just bring one or two new ones because, again, it's going to be pretty much right after the stories that were there. And, you know, kind of like what irritates me about Pokemon is we have a thousand of them now and they all mix and match, but, like, why? they weren't there originally. You didn't run into all these random ones. And it, it's kind of like that you should have had this set up better. Right. So that's, that's why we're only do like two new ones. Okay. And I, I think, I think that would be decent. Okay. I like it. I like it. A, um, a, a realistic kind of measured resurrection of the franchise. Right. Giving the people that really enjoyed it more of the old one as well as introducing something that's new, right? And like kind of having every, everything be cohesive and centered around the kind of the the original love or energy behind Left 4 Dead. I like that. I like right. that. Not going crazy off the wall. Right. Because like what I feel uh, Back for Blood Dead did uh, weirdly is they like they have these uh, these cards so mm-hmm. you can like set up your uh your class or whatever and like that was cool but like it it was i think it was too much mm-hmm. you know unlock these cards and stuff like that and yeah. try to just you know y- yeah maybe add one or two things to the game mm-hmm. but like people liked these games for a reason right that's all you really have to do is just get new story and keep the same game Somatics and you, I, it will be a pretty decent game. Yeah, I agree. Nice. So that's that is your strategy for resurrecting Left 4 Dead. I think yes. Left 4 Dead works. All righty, the next game, David, you're responsible. Now this one isn't technically dead, but eh. it's been a couple years. Your task is to resurrect. Halo. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Well, first, we know how I feel about Halo. We do. So this is okay. For genre, first-person shooters, this is gonna be this is gonna be very hard to do because one, it has a 
long list of games. It's not just two anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And it has a lot of diehard fans, and it has a lot of fans that are really separated. A lot of people like Reach and 4, and a lot of people like 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. Some people like 5 and Infinite. You know, so it's it's everywhere. So right off the bat, it's going to be a hard time to please half of the Halo fan base, right? Yep, yep. So, again, we're going to have to go with both, single and multi. Mm-hmm. And the split screen, maybe, again, but not really important, maybe. I don't know, that's hard. Uh, we're going to have to have a great story. I I don't know the story for Halo. I, I played three. Mm-hmm. I went through the story on that one a couple times. So that's all I got there. But the, the, the story is going to have to be great, right? Mm-hmm. That's where a lot of it was based off of one and two. I feel from what I've gathered in people talking about it, one and two just had really great stories. And that's what brought the uh, the game franchise up. Mm-hmm. And then Halo 3 is what really brought the multiplayer ring to it. Right. Right. So single player, going to have a great story. Multiplayer, we're going to have to have, you know, the multiple maps, different types of gameplay, you know. And this, I, oh, this one's really hard. Like, I don't know what to bring to the table on this one that the others either failed at or succeeded at and how to not just blatantly copy it because Mm -hmm. these games aren't really much the same you know they have the same base but as they're building the pyramid yeah Yeah. as the you know it it kind of ventures off at that point Mm -hmm. like i can't say from experience what the main differences are from reach and four and five and three but the fan base does, and having such a wide range, you're gonna have to probably just take the best out of all of them and kind of feng shui a little. Uh, what is that called? Well, I would say, <sighs> like, like so, like the last Halo, um, Halo Infinite, mm-hmm. was basically. I mean, I think the story of it is essentially that. Um, you're like trying to get home and then like a pilot or something crashes and you're like trying to save the pilot, get the pilot home. And you land on you land on this world and you discover things about it. Mechanically, from a dis- like like a gameplay standpoint, it's basically Halo meets uh Titanfall, kind of. Oh uh, okay. in, in a little bit of ways, you know. So um yeah, I would say mostly from a mechanic standpoint, it hasn't changed much since like those early later halos you know Mm -hmm. like a halo 3 or something okay yeah wow you got genre makes it a little easier you're keeping it first person you're keeping both single i I feel like if you try to pull third person out of that i i think you're gonna have none of the fan base yeah because i know that was a a big uproar for Resident Evil at one point. I'm going from like tank controls and third person and it was like first person and making a big change like that could end you. Well let's see they well they, so they did two different versions. They did two other right series of it. They had like the Spartan Assault series, which were like like twin stick isometric shooters. And then they okay. had uh, the Halo War series, which was like the real-time strategy versions. Of it. I do. I remember that one. My brother played that one quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were able to more successfully with Halo Wars than Spartan Assault series, but mm-hmm. they were able to somewhat successfully explore different genres or types of games. But I agree. If 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 I'm handing you the Halo series and I'm saying what you're going to do with it, if you were like... Oh, I'm going to make a puzzle platformer. I would say, right? You're that's not. I, that's not what you do. <laughs> I feel the obvious answer is to keep it in the genre that really made it. Yeah. 
And yeah, if that. if you do that game and that game does well, then yeah, maybe try a different genre and see how well it does. But if you're if people know, like people like you that pay attention to who's making what and who's doing what and you know they were just given this IP and they go off the rails and do something like that, they will never hear the end of it. Yeah. And I I don't I don't want to not hear the end of it, so yeah. I'm going to keep it I feel you. where it started. I feel you. So I think, uh, that's all I got. We kind of talked about it before, and I'm kind of like, um, I would really love a, like a psychological horror action type of Halo. I would like a Halo that even if it's kept in first person, if mm-hmm. it gave me more of a feeling of something like a, Something like a Remedy Games, like an Alan Wake 2 or a Control, or right. it gave me the feelings of something like a Spec Ops or even something like an, um, what was that one game? Um, uh, man, I, can't, I can't remember it, but you know, like more of like a psychological type of thing that plays with your mind right. a little more. I think that'd be, that'd be really cool. They definitely have the background for that with all the different kind of aliens they're fighting and mm-hmm. how much, you know, destruction there is. And easily, like you might not be Master Chief, but you might be a regular soldier and you right. know, you're trying to escape the huge war that just broke out of nowhere because they invaded you. Well, I mean, yeah, you got in Halo in Halo 5 Guardians, you played Locke half the game. You didn't even play Master Chief. And then Reach, no, not Reach. Maybe it is Reach. Reach, you play Master Chief? I think maybe you play Master Chief in Reach. I know in uh, Halo ODST, you don't play... You just play a Spartan. You don't play as Master Chief at all. Um, so they've done a couple where you've not been Master Chief. But even if you were, I feel like there's so much with like his connection with Cortana and the trauma and the fragmentation with all of that. They mm-hmm. could play off. They could play a psychological thing. They, they need, I think they really need to. I think they need to take a Resident Evil approach to it. Like stay in first person, but just do different things with it. Don't make it so. They did a little bit with Infinite. I like to see them do some more in regards to the the atmosphere and how that feels mm-hmm. um okay but we we got you we got you for halo so we got one last game okay you've just been you've been just just been brought on in as our creative director and <sighs> the game franchise you're tasked with now resurrecting is twisted metal oh, yeah baby yeah baby okay Hmm, there's so many ways to go with this one. I think we'll have to keep it obviously the same genre. Just a little Battle Royale car, blow them up, kill everybody, next level mm-hmm. type, type deal. Um, this one, adding multiplayer to it. I think this would be an amazing multiplayer game because obviously there's all these Battle Royales that do very well. And even the ones that didn't do very well, they did succeed a little bit. Like, I forget the name of it right now, but there was, like, a uh, sorcery mage battle royale that I played quite a little bit. And that was really fun. Yeah, there was yeah. no guns in there. It was just these little uh, arm things that you find have that have different mm-hmm. magic powers. Really cool. So, I mean, I know Twisted Metal does have guns, but, like, it, it shows there's many things you can do with the same type of genre and still have a decent uh, win to it. Yeah. Right. So single player, obviously as, as starting it, you know, before we start going into meetings and stuff, this is what I brought to the table. As I was told, we're, we're we have to have Calypso as the original storyteller like almost all the other ones right he's the one with the power and stuff like that and he you know he's twisted you have to have that twist model right and single player i, I want to bring it back to the original like i know i've complained about the last twisted metal not enough honestly and be able to select the character that you want get through all the levels see what they're finish you know their uh end story is mm-hmm. and you know what they want to want see how calypso twists it that was the best part yeah you know and 
a lot of characters. You know, maybe do do like 15, 20 characters. So that way the replay re, replayability is there. You know, because if you, you beat it with the only five people, that's that's what six, seven hours maybe. And I know that's good for you know some games, but you have this game with multiple people, multiple things to do. Yeah, you you want that replayability, right? So if you put in fifteen, twenty people, you're gonna have these people in this game playing it quite often. And then with the multiplayer, you know, obviously you know they have different maps, just like they did in the previous ones. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be real people instead of you facing a computer, and it's gonna be just a little. It's it's gonna feel like a mini game, right? Because there's no story to that because if you mm-hmm. just you, you die you know it's just next next game right they 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 could do maybe some sort of like not a tournament but like say the matches are 20 people right keep it kind of small mm-hmm. because you're either you're, you're driving around finding mm-hmm. the item stuff like that so you're, you're not right. just gonna die immediately like on all these other ones that you can if you hot drop and whatnot, right. but these 20 people die or get dropped in, you know, one person wins and the other 19 games going on at that time, they get into the next match and they, you know, those 20 are going at it. And then the people win that one. So there, there's a slight way to do it, but I feel like that's very convoluted mm-hmm. and the matchmaking on that would just get, harder and harder especially if there wasn't that many people playing right so just you know little mini game multiplayer 20 people yeah. dropping a map you win you lose next one and I, I feel like that'd be really fun you know and i know some of them they have destruction keep that in there i just feel like it'd be a good time waster you know yeah not not waste but like you just go in you don't have to think you just shoot Mhm. And more, you know, focusing on the story. Maybe since we're in the the age that we are now, I know Black did a pretty good uh thing with it. You know, you selected your character, they were in the asylum, and then throughout the game, you know, you'd run into like minion or whatever and they do a little story video, and mm-hmm. at the end there's a video. So I feel like they could do more with the story in this one. Mhm. Just get it really make you feel like you are the person that you're being right i got you. so i so i i feel like that would do well and that's that's what i would want with those 15 characters is that like what you're starting let's say or are you thinking like 10 of them you start with you got to unlock five of them or something that's a good question um yeah why not you know give something to work for yeah. And, you know, if it's, yeah, yeah. Say you say, you know, you start with the 10 and then there there's the five unlockable and, you know, the first unlockable is just beat the game with a character. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. And then the other one is, you know, beat the game with every character. And then one of them is beat the game on the hardest difficulty. So if you just go in this game, go on the hardest difficulty and you beat the game, you're going to unlock two people right away. Mm hmm. Because one, you beat the game once, and then two, hardest difficulty. You know, it, overlapping, totally acceptable in my opinion. And yeah, yeah it, it gives you something to to work for. Yeah. And I just thought about this. I I need statistics. Statistics will be in this game, unlike the yeah. other ones. You know, you play the matchmaking. How many games you've played? How many have you won? How many you've lost? Uh, how many stories have you beaten? Who may? How many? Who's your most played character? Mm-hmm. How many times have you beaten with so and so? You know, stuff like that. Just you know, things that keep people to play. Maybe, yeah. maybe even some sort of uh, leaderboard. That yep. is what kept me on Modern Warfare 2 for so long until all the hacking began. <laughs> like I was working so hard for most kills. I was number 700 on Modern Warfare 2. And then the hacking began, and I woke up and played the next day, and I was ranked like 12,000. I was like screaming. I was mad. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I think, you know, I think that would do well. 
I agree. I think that's a nice I think that's a nice plan of resurrection for Twisted Metal. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well I think after... I think I think you're gonna I think you're gonna knock this gig out the park. I got this. Yeah. Well, we're nearing the end of the podcast level, which means we've reached final thoughts. We can give a final thought about something that could be related or unrelated to this podcast level. Um, I'll go ahead and give it first, give you a little bit of a break. All right. You're, you're in there pitching. You were like, you're at the Sharks. You was pitching, you know? Um, so my final thought is going back to something I was going to mention is that uh, there was a recent hubbub about Helldivers 2. If you were on PC. Oh, you could play it. God. It was fine. Yes. And then PlayStation yes. said, hey, if you want to play it, you got to link it to your PSN account. So if you don't have a PSN account, you got to create one or yada, yada, yada in order to play the game. Uh, PC gamers got pissed off. They started review bombing the game on Steam and every else, anywhere else you could get it. 213,000. Yeah. In a yeah. day. Yeah. Negative reviews. And so um, PlayStation was trying to hold because PlayStation's terrible. I know we talk about Xbox, Microsoft a lot, but we talk about their incompetence. PlayStation is just scummy. Right. That, that's that's two really different towers here. Yeah, it's, it's it's different things. They aren't so much incompetent as they are scummy. Um, but they were incompetent in this. Well, they were greedy in this practice. Um, and they got all those review bombs, and things weren't going well. The game was tanking. Uh, the developers were were fearful because they've been working on this game. It's been great, so well received, and all of a sudden their game is on fire. Um, and then PlayStation recently decided that you know what, we're going to remove the requirement that you link to a PSN account to play this game with the caveat that we will find uh, some ways to accommodate PC gamers. Of course, that's a threat. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not them saying, hey, we're going to find a way to be better with this. That's a threat. They just want your information and they want to monetize you in some way because they're Sony and they're PlayStation. They think they're entitled to your money. This is the company that told you that if you can't afford a $600 console, pick up another job. Th this doesn't change. This is what they believe. They, um, they want your info so they can get hacked and you can be screwed over. Right, because that hasn't happened before. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Sony did that. Sony sucks. Just want to make sure that's my final thought <laughs> is, that they, that, is that they suck. Of all, of all of the big three, I dislike Sony the most. Um mm. Because like Nintendo's archaic and weird, and they're also kind of scummy, but they're like, you know, they're it's Nintendo. Like you know, it's like you know, I don't really, I don't really anticipate any malice. But with Sony, everything is calculated. They are trying to siphon every single cent they can out of you and get everything they can from you. And rather than just letting people enjoy their highly successful game that they've made money off of, by the way, they want your information. They want you on their platform. They're trying to get everything they can from you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just that's a scummy. But what do you expect? Sony, they up their membership price without giving you anything. And uh, they were the first ones to put $70 for their first party games. They suck. So uh, there you go. My final thought. That that was a good one. Yeah, I just I've been seeing so many uh, TikToks and stuff about the review bombing of the Hell Divers, and uh, I just it's crazy. And I see a lot of comments about uh, like the PSN fanboys, like it's you just you just gotta sign up. Like, oh, look at these PC whiny brats, blah blah blah. And like, as you said, most people are just concerned about their data. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. I don't want Sony to have my email and a password and you know if they get hacked quite often. Yeah, well Sony fan that. Sony fanboys the most feverish and loudest loud of bootlickers online. Uh there's there's no populace that will defend exploitative predatory capitalism than Sony fanboys. Uh, so it's, I can 100 percent understand. Hey, you just got to sign up for your PSN. It's not like they're going to get hacked like they did before when the PS3 was out. Uh, you know, so it's yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, you know, protect your information and your data when you can, and also you're just free to not support companies you think don't have good practices. I mean, I've got a PlayStation Five. It is what it is. But um, you know, I just I just make decisions on what and will I what I will and won't support. And most of the time, it comes down to the developer. 
and the people that are part of a project as to whether it's supported or not, you know? Right. And then uh, another one was like, well, they're not the only people to do it. You, you have to do third party links up all the time. That's not that's not the point. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want this in general. And this just right. so happened to be a great opportunity to show that. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. But uh, my final thought is, this might have been another final thought. Thinking about it, but I want a delicious peanut butter that isn't made with these terrible, terrible oils. Mm. Right? There's only like two oils that are like, you know, good for you that aren't garbage oils that we're using because they're they're cheap and you know terrible like this uh this peanut butter has hydrogenated vegetable oils mm -hmm. that those not great for the body but i love peanut butter and all these natural ones that don't have oils and whatever it's just you know the peanuts and salt and stuff it's not blended as well so like I'm not trying to get rid of the oil. I know the oil is not you know the best for me, but use the oil that is the best for me. I don't care. Like this jar was like eight bucks. I will buy a thirteen dollar jar of peanut butter if you use the decent oils. I know it's more expensive. What's what's Everything the expensive ideal? Everything's expensive That's true. That is one hundred percent true. What's the ideal oil for you? Uh, just extra virgin olive oil. Okay. I feel like that's accessible enough to where someone could, a company could do that, you know? Right. You're not asking for like beef tallow or something to be in here. You're asking right. for not, you know, it's, it's there. Yeah. I just know it's going to be more costly towards their business, mm -hmm. which I will be more costly out of my pocket to pay you more per 30 ounce container of peanut butter. This reminds me of, I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Conan O'Brien is. I'm not sure I if you do like know him. Yes. His brand of comedy. Well, he has his YouTube channel. And recently, I think a few days ago, he did a video with uh, a guy in the universe of the show named Jordan Schlansky. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this guy. This guy I am not. Um, but what he just, the argument you just made is the argument he made over 20 some odd minutes regarding toilet paper. Um. So it's it's regards to that, like, hey, the toilet paper is the one I buy. It's twenty dollars for however much. They've changed the pricing. They changed how much they offer now, but it's the same price. I would gladly pay more for the same amount. Okay, I understand inflation. Well, just give me my toilet paper, but they're not. And he's just lamenting to the world about this toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel it's the same way. You kind of said the same thing. I just want my peanut butter with with, for instance, extra virgin olive oil. I'll pay more for it. But I want peanut butter with the with a more healthy option of oil and not this other crap that you guys are putting in there. Right. Yeah. And speaking of toilet paper, there's there's one that they just started making that the line isn't straight anymore. It's like a like wavy. Why why was that not a thing like wavy? I feel like that's gonna tear so much easier. You know, you go it's, to you go to tear that straight line and just sometimes just rips down. So oh, like it, the perforations on it when you're supposed yes, to rip instead of it being a line. Thank you. It's a little. It's a little. Huh. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a brand that started making it wavy. That's just nonsensical. But you know what that is? It's innovation. <laughs> it's capitalism. They're trying to compete. They're trying to compete, and they're saying that we can't compete with these straight line perforations. We're going to oh make it wavy. Oh my god. Yeah. This is it's innovation, oh, man. This this is a level right here. It is. It is. It's come full circle. Dang, the foreshadowing on that one. Yeah. That's great. Is. You're oh dang it. You're right. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Sometimes innovation don't work. Uh well, that's my final thought. All right. Well, that leads us to the end of level one hundred and three of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on Spotify and Apple and YouTube and YouTube Music, I guess. I don't know. Whatever Google's doing. Um, 
We are also on the socials. If you want to follow, like, and follow us there, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at thoughts.players. Um, we are on Instagram. Uh, we already said that. We are on Twitter at Thoughts Player 2. And then, of course, we are on YouTube where we upload video versions of our podcast episodes. If you want to support us, two ways you can do it. One is merch. I don't have my phone in it right now, but Thoughts and Players, cases like this, I tried to find my shirt. I could not. I will have it for the next one. Uh, but you can also go there and get shirts. You can get hats. You can get stickers. I don't have my water bottle near me, but I have almost all our stickers on my on that water bottle. Um, and you can also support us at Patreon if you want to. We have three tiers, two, five, seven dollar tiers. Each offers exclusive goodies and bits up there. Um, things like uh, episode two of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough will be up there pretty soon. Um, and so certain things like that where you see it before anyone else before it's released on YouTube if you want to check that stuff out or you just want to give us a buck or two and say hey we dig what you're doing uh, that is it for me David is there anything you would like to add peace All right. well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level <laughs>